Welcome to the Buffalo Review TV. I'm Nikita Singh. And I'm Jacob Feigen. In today's show, we'll be discussing about the new media outlet Stripes Media, the USG election, the Cuomo Initiative, and much more. Now, from the campus of SUNY Buffalo State, news and information for Buffalo and the surrounding communities, it's the Buffalo Review TV, produced by Stripes Media. The men's hockey team broke a school record set last year for wins in the season with their 16th win last Friday night. The win came against the Brockport Golden Eagles by a score of 2-1. to one. Goalie Mike DeLaverne put up a 27 save performance, keeping his team in the game. This win has clinched the, Eagle, uh, the Bengals in a spot in the playoffs for their seventh season in a row. The Bengals followed up their win last Friday night with a loss to the Geneseo Knights, 3-0. With two games remaining in the regular season, the Bengals will look to move up in the standings and position themselves better for the playoffs. Three student media outlets on campus are working to collaborate as one. Here is reporter Eli Fortune with more. It has been dubbed as the future of student media here on campus. Here's more on the story. The likes of BSE TV, The Record, and WBNY have been in the works of creating a unified media outlet for students. This unified effort is being called Stripes Media. Dr. Anne-Marie Franzek, a prominent member of the Communication Department and advisor for The Record, spoke of the advantages students and Buffalo State would have with this collaboration. There are a lot of schools across the country that are doing exactly this, and a student who goes through a converged newsroom will be better prepared for a professional newsroom, and Buff State will be able to compete with these other schools that also have this type of converged newsroom. So it, it, it's a it's a win-win. We were able to pay a visit to the WBNY radio station to talk to General Manager Michael Peters about Stripes Media. We've recently really got together uh, the the GMs and a few other you know appointed individuals from the three different media organizations on campus to start, you know, to have further conversations about it. And it seems like, you know, we have been progressing a little further. The WBNY GM was able to address the delay of the conglomerate between the three media outlets by touching on a majority concern. Part of it is mindsets. Part of it is understanding. Part of it is trying to figure out how we want to accomplish this. Uh, a lot of people go into this process with uh, a variety of different ideas on how it should work. And the reason why there is that you know two year, twenty year, whatever year lag is because people want to be careful to not destroy you know the organizations and the names and the history that comes around both of those or all those. There is much more to be done before students can expect Stripes Media to come to fruition. A meeting between student affairs and the representatives of Buffalo State's media outlets will potentially be held within the next month. This past Wednesday, tickets for the Robert Glasper experiment went on sale. Tickets are between $40 to $45 and can be purchased online or by calling the box office at 716-878-3005. Box office hours are every day Monday to Friday from 9 to 5 p.m. The concert will be held at the Buffalo State Performing Arts Center on Thursday, April 20th at 8 p.m. For more information, please call the Director of Operations, Jeffrey Marsha, at 716-878-3599. The last day to apply for student elections will be on Friday, February 17th. Any student is eligible to run for student elections. If any student wants to run, they must fill out an application on the United Students Government website. Some of the positions that students can run for are President, Executive Vice President, Treasurer, Administrative Vice President for Campus Affairs and Government Relations, and much more. Other positions are open on other campus governing bodies. For more information and positions and qualifications, campus rules, and full elections, schedule to the student election page on BengalConnect.com. The leaders of next year's United Students Government will be chosen at the end of March. Last week, Governor Cuomo came to campus talking about the latest proposal about free tuition. Robert, reporter Osman Shire has the latest today about the Cuomo Initiative. Cuomo's proposal for free tuition and the impact it will have on campus. And no one is going to be deprived of college because they cannot afford it. 
After the rally, attendees were empowered by the governor and were happy that he chose Buffalo State as a stop in his tour. First, we're just really excited that Governor Cuomo has chosen to start his tour at Buffalo State Campus. You've seen the energy, it was amazing. Um, students and faculty, and administration as well as elected officials came out, so this is really a great time to be here at Buffalo State. Under this proposal, families and individuals making up to 125,000 a year could potentially qualify to attend an accredited state college or university for free. And so now I feel like this would be a big weight off of not just the students, but our faculty and staff as well. He just wants to pass legislation that will cover the cost of tuition for two-year and four-year institutions. I sat down with Buffalo State Provost Perot to discuss a personalized program that will further assist students by lowering the cost of textbooks. We found that the average Buff State student who would benefit from this would save about $2,000 a year. And that's a lot, over four years. Cuomo's initiative is aiming to start its three-year phase as early as the upcoming fall 2017. And we think it has some good potential for students, so we're hopeful. I'm Osmond Shire. This is Bengal Review TV. The All Bright Knox exhibit Picasso, His Life and Models wraps up this past weekend on Saturday. The presentation features paintings, sculptures, drawings, and prints by Picasso from the All Bright Knox collection. The work of arts shown in the collection were gathered from museums across both Europe and the United States. The Winter Farmers Market at Buffalo State is up and running in Buckham Hall every Saturday morning from 9 a.m. to noon. The market will be open every Saturday morning till the end of April, featuring more than 15 local vendors. Live music and entertainment will be presented throughout the market. This collaborative project is brought to you by the Small Business Development Center, the Research and Economic Development Office, the Elmwood Village Association, and the Department of Health, Nutrition, and Dietetics. Next on the Buffalo Review, our very own Monique Maxwell will be joined by the Fashion Student Association. Stay tuned. Three, two, one, cue them, take camera two. You're watching the Buffalo Review TV, produced by Stripes Media. You can find out more about our show at our website, thebuffalorevue.wordpress.com, and we welcome your feedback. If you have a question, comment, or story idea, you can email us at thebuffalorevue at gmail.com. Welcome to the Buffalo Review. I'm Monique Maxwell, and I'm here today with the Fashion Students Association. Today we'll be recapping their successful event that happened this past Tuesday on Valentine's Day. So, thanks for coming in, Kadeen. What was your event about? Um, it was about basically promoting healthy relationships, safe sex, and helping a couple lonely people find a Valentine. Awesome. And I know that you collaborated with Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Mm -hmm. What made your two organizations collaborate on this event? Well, we usually have this um, event together, so we decided to do it yet again because it's always successful, and it's always a successful collaboration with them because they bring something different to the table. So we just decided like, just to collab with them once again. Awesome, awesome. And so what steps did you take in order to make sure that your event was successful? Um, well, we, there was a lot of meetings, a lot of meetings with the Kappas because they have different schedules than us to like do the PowerPoint in order for us to present that. And as an e-board, we all went shopping to get the raffle stuff. We baked a lot, like a lot for the event. So we did that and there was a lot of promotion. That was an important thing we did. So we did a lot of dorm storming in the freshman buildings because we wanted more of the freshmen to come out because upperclassmen usually don't come out to events that much. And we want the freshmen to, to become more involved and see what FSA is all about. Awesome. So what type of food did you have at this event and what type of giveaways did you have? Um, well, you know, we had like chocolate covered strawberries, fruits, cupcakes, you know, little sexy things that would like scream Valentine's Day and we had a raffle for a teddy bear for a female winner. Awesome. So were there any, uh, there were many Valentine's Day uh, events, as you know, held mm -hmm. by many organizations on campus. What made your event different? Um, I would say because we're FSA, we usually bring a large crowd and we added the speed dating element. And I feel like a lot of organizations don't really add that. And instead of it just being a program where geared towards you just watching a, present, a presentation and answering questions, we wanted individuals to get a chance to know somebody else on campus. So I feel like that's what made it a little bit different. Awesome. 
How diverse do you think that your crowd of participants were? Did you see like any new faces on FSA or? Yeah, it was definitely diverse and I was just not expecting that much people to come, to be honest. Um, we definitely saw a lot of new faces than we see at our GIs because of the dorm storming. We pulled a lot of um, the freshman buildings. A lot of people came from Newman, from Porter. Nice. So that was really cool to see. That's awesome. And how do you think the event went, or what could have what could have changed? What would you have done better for maybe like a future speed dating event? Um, I would say for us to try to get them a little bit geared up for the speed dating because a lot of people were very much so shy, and our eboard is not shy at all. So we had to really get them out their comfort zone. And I said the Kappas really helped a lot with that because you know they did their little shimmying and the whipped cream, and the girls loved that. So you know, once they got some whipped cream licked off their finger, everybody got a little bit more comfortable. So yeah, awesome. Um, so what else does your organization have in store for the semester? Well, we have GIs every Tuesdays from 12.30 to 1.30. We're having our model calls next week, Wednesday, for a fashion show coming up in April. It's going to be amazing. And also, we're having a sip and paint next week, Thursday, with a special guest. So everybody's invited to come out. Awesome. Yeah. Any more details you want to give us? Maybe that host name or... Well, his name is Andrew Toussaint, and he goes to an art school. I'm not sure which one, but he's very excited to come out and, like, showcase some of the new paintings he's been working on and just, you know, help out with the paint night because he's very passionate about that. And our fashion show, it's going to be really amazing. The theme is avant-garde, so it's going to be really good. What's that theme? Um, it's basically more of a dark and whimsical theme that we're going for this year, and we want everybody to dress up because what we usually see is like a lot of people don't dress up for fashion shows just because we have it in the social hall. They think it's more of a chill, laid-back event. So we probably think with an upscale name, people will try to come out, dress up a little bit more, and we just really want to pull the freshman crowd out once again because most of us are graduating. So we want to like recruit people for the e-board and just to show the campus like what we are about. Nice, nice. So where can someone find more information about becoming a member or about upcoming events? On our Instagram, which is Buffalo State FSA, shameless plug, follow us. And any eBoard member you see us, we're always around campus. I'm actually an RA in Porter, so I tell all my residents all the time to come out and come through and support. And if you're a designer, a photographer, a blogger, we really recruit those people a lot because we want to give them a chance to showcase their talent and promote themselves and market themselves to the other um, students here who may need a photographer or anything like that. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to follow them on social media. I'm Monique Maxwell, and this is The Buffalo Review. Three, two, one, cue them, take camera two. You're watching The Buffalo Review TV, produced by Stripes Media. You can find out more about our show at our website, thebuffalorevue.wordpress.com, and we welcome your feedback. If you have a question, comment, or story idea, you can email us at thebuffalorevue at gmail.com. Hi, I'm Terrence Young, and welcome back to the Buffalo Review TV. Joining me today is Aurora Shunk, who is the member of the Volunteer in Service uh, Leadership Program. Uh, she's going to talk to us about uh, the uh, alternate break program that's uh, going to be uh, taking place in a couple of weeks. So thank you for joining us, Aurora. Thank you. So uh, tell me what is the alternative break exactly and sure. how long has it been around? So the alternative break program is part of the Volunteer and Service Learning Center here on campus and it was a program that we started back in 2010 um, and the goal of the alternative break program is to engage students in service during one of their academic breaks like spring break um, and get them uh, volunteering within a group of 10 or so of them, um, reflecting on what they've done, and then being able to determine how they want to engage in the community once they come back to campus. So becoming an active citizen and active in their community. So what exactly do they have to do to join sure. stuff like that, price and all that stuff? So the Alternative Break Program, um, each year we do between four and six, or before, between four and five trips. 
Um, and each one of the trips is a little bit different. Each one's focused on a particular social issue, um, and each one goes to a different location. Um, so the pricing really depends on what location we're going to, how we're getting there, um, because one of the things we try to do is we travel very lightly. We travel to low-cost ac housing accommodations, um, and um, by buying all of our food together and meal planning for the week, it keeps costs low. Um, but the l d distance from campus really helps, really determines how much the trip is going to be costing. So as long as you've been around, uh, how has the program grown in terms of popularity, yeah. you know, uh, p uh, participation? Yeah, so I've been in the Volunteer and Service Learning Center for about five years now. And when I first um, became a staff member there, we only had two trips, and they were both during spring break. Um, and now, like I said, we've had the last couple of years between four and five trips going out. Um, one of the other things in the other ways that we've grown is we have a student leadership team um, of, depending on the year, between seven and ten student leaders who work on recruitment, social media, um, fundraising, all that kind of e-boards type things that a lot of the USG organizations do. Um, and then we also have a team of site leaders who are responsible for planning and coordinating all of the logistics, all of the community partners and service projects for their particular trip um, and educating and onboarding their, the students that are going on their trip with them. Um, so we've really grown in terms of our student leadership part of our program in the last three, four years. Now, um, well, I'm aware that y'all went somewhere last, uh, last month, I believe. It was for last break. Uh, yeah. Where did y'all go? So we went um, right after our CEP week um, we, in December. We went to Cleveland. Um, our, the focus of the trip was on how education and poverty intersect and interact with one another. Um, so the students and I, we were volunteering at the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Cleveland, the Food Bank, um, the Kids Book Bank, and Habitat for Humanity. Um, so we spent about five days there in Cleveland kind of exploring that social issue a little bit deeper. So. Now, so the five years you've been there, what is your personal favorite trip you've been a part of? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, one of the trips that was like the most unusual and really pushed me out of my comfort zone um, as a staff person was um, Back in 2013, we went to Bear Mountain State Park, which I know a lot of New York City students kind of, they might be familiar with it because it's about 45 minutes north of the city. Um, we were in the, the foothills of the Appalachian Trail and we were um, hiking, doing hiking trails, building them from scratch. So learning all about how different soil is better for hiking trails than other kind of soil because it erodes faster and that sort of thing and the slope of the hiking trail. It was just really interesting and neat. Um, and the one morning, we didn't have to do any service. They were going to have us join them after lunch. Um, so a couple of the students and I, we actually hiked to the top of Bear Mountain. So that was quite a feat because it was really, really high, really hard to get up to the top of it. So it was, it was really neat. So um, with all the students that you've worked with, uh, how do you, what, what do you see when them, when they first come in and when they leave and what have they learned, their character changes, anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on how much or how long the student's involved in the program. If a student, you know, just goes on a trip with us, there is definitely a transformation. I see it. You know, the first, we just had our first orientation meeting for our spring break trips today, actually, and, you know, it's that weird, awkward kind of uh Thing with the students on that very first day where nobody really knows each other they're kind of feeling each other out um, but from going to that in about six weeks you know by the end of their trip right at the end of spring break I already know that they're gonna be very very a close-knit group of students they're gonna have inside jokes um, so it's really kind of it's remarkable to see that transformation within a group of students who have never met each other who probably maybe never have even seen each other and passed by each other on campus so it's pretty remarkable about how that can really change in students and then just seeing their um, the reaction and them understanding a social issue a little bit better um, based on their volunteer experience based on their conversations with their peers it's a really neat transformation to see just in every single student that goes on the trip itself 
So speaking of the spring semester, where will y'all be going uh, this spring? Yeah, so we have two spring break trips. Um, the one is going to Boston, Massachusetts. They're going to be focused on homelessness. Um, Boston has bit, they set a goal, the city of Boston, of ending homelessness by 2018. So the students are going to be working with Room to Grow and the Food Bank of Greater Boston and the Oasis Coalition, which are nonprofit organizations in the city of Boston that are really trying to um, assist individuals that are experiencing homelessness or who are at risk and potentially could be facing homelessness in you know, a matter of months or days or weeks. Um, and then our other trip, we're going to be traveling back to Sky Meadow State Park. It's a trip we did back in 2014, I believe. Um, and Sky Meadow State Park, it's a state park in Virginia. Um, and the students are going to be doing hiking trails. Again, they're going to be building them um, right there on the Blue, the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia. And they're going to be uh, planting trees again. On They have a big creek stream that runs through the state park so they're going to be planting trees there to assist with the ecosystem um, and working in their educational center doing some different projects that are based around engaging youth in environmental conservation and stewardship so yeah that's where we're going okay so last question is there any future trips you want to share with us yeah so we have a summer break trip as well that's going out um, right after finals week again um, we are going to be traveling for the very first time on an airplane, which is kind of exciting and very scary all at the same time um, with a whole group of, you know, 12 of us down to New Orleans. And um, the trip's going to focus on a couple of different things. One of it is, you know, just the, eff the effects of Hurricane Katrina. It happened in 2005, but, um, you know, almost over a decade later, there are still some um, impacts that that hurricane has had on the community. Um, they're also going to be looking at food security and food access and healthy food access um, through a partnership with Blair Grocery, which is an urban farm in the Lower Ninth Ward, which was one of the hardest hit places in uh, New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. And then they're also going to be looking at the environment itself during that trip experience. So. Okay, well, that's all the time we have uh, for today. Thank you again, Aurora, for coming in and sharing some information. Uh, you've been listening and watching The Buffalo Review. The Buffalo Review TV, produced by Stripes Media, we welcome your feedback. If you have a question, comment, or story idea, you can email us at thebuffalorevue at gmail.com.